Have you ever wondered why are my vegetables growing so slowly and what can I do about it to fix it? If you've gone out to your garden and noticed that things just aren't growing how you'd hope they would be, there might be some key causes as to why they're not growing as fast as you'd hoped and there are actually some things you can get on and do about them. Very first cause to look into is whether it's a good plant for you to be growing. Sometimes poor plant choices are the sole reason they're not growing well. Plants that are well adapted for where you are will grow a lot better in your environment. This is why it's really key to try and source plants and seeds and seedlings from as close to home as possible and even better to be able to save your own seeds over multiple generations so they really do adapt to your own situation. Number two would be positioning. Some plants grow a lot better in the shade and some plants grow a lot better in the sun and some plants aren't so fussy. But if you've got plants that are growing really slowly it might be that it's either too sunny or too dark where they're growing. It might be the wrong season. Some plants prefer to grow on the shoulder seasons where the weather is cooler and they don't mind so much that the days are shorter. Peas are a classic example of this. Peas grow much better in early springtime or really late in the season, even heading into early winter. They prefer not to be growing in the heat of the summer. Plants that prefer the heat, like peppers and tomatoes and all the squash, zucchini, pumpkins, those friends, they all need the heat and the sun to get them going. So if you're trying to grow the wrong type of plant at the wrong time of year, you're just not going to have the success that you're hoping for. Maybe it's just too cold. Plants have different tolerance to how hot and how cold they can be. And some plants just do not tolerate the cold and will get damaged leaves very easily. And they just don't grow well when it's not warm enough for them. Tomatoes and peppers are two of the classic ones. And again, tomatoes can be really fussy when it comes to how hot it is as well. Anything over about 30 degrees Celsius, which I can't remember, I think it's about 65 Fahrenheit. I'll have to put it up here for you to be able to see. Anything over there anyway, they start dropping their blossoms and they just don't thrive. Peppers on the other hand have slightly different requirements again and the tomatoes can tolerate the cooler weather a little bit better than the peppers can but the peppers can definitely tolerate the heat better than the tomatoes can. Other plants that do prefer the colder weather will often just bulk to seed when you expose them to too much heat too quickly. So you'll find a lot of your brassicas, if you've had them sown and planted out in the early springtime and you get a really warm snap, you'll find that they won't grow properly. They'll just shoot off to flower and go to seed really quickly and you'll get these short little spindly things that have decided to flower instead of turning into broccolis or cabbages. Amongst plants, there are of course different varieties that are better suited to different temperatures. So if you have particularly hot summers, look for tomatoes that do better in hot weather. And if you have particularly cold summers, look for ones that are more well adapted to colder areas. Another problem could be that your plants just aren't getting enough sun for what they need. Plants with big dark green leaves can tolerate less sun than little leaved plants or ones that have soft tender uh, smaller green leaves. If a plant has a really high sun requirement and it's not getting enough it will really stunt its growth. Another key factor is nutrients or a lack of nutrients or sometimes there might be a toxin in the soil that's affecting the growth of the plant. And pyrolid is one, unfortunately, that has made its way into a lot of even organic compost. Sometimes it's one of those broadleaf sprays that they can spray on paddocks and then it goes into the hay. And unfortunately, it's not broken down in the animal, so it remains in their manure. And then this manure is making its way into our compost and making its way into our garden still with these broadleaf sprays in them. So that may be an issue as to why some of your plants aren't doing so well. I do have a blog post all about that which I will put a link to down below for you to read up on. The big nutrient required to get particularly seedlings and young leafy plants off to a good start is nitrogen. And if your compost that you've put on your garden or if you've mulched it with wood mulch, things that aren't broken down well yet, maybe sucking the nitrogen up, they will eventually release it again. But in the short term, while your plants are young and needing it, it may be being used up by other things. So sometimes adding a little bit of a nitrogen rich tea that you can water in can really make a big difference if your plants aren't doing so well. Other micronutrients can also have a really big effect on how well your plants are growing. The final thing that I can think of is 
too much water or not enough water. Again, water is one of those balancing things like temperature. Too much water in your plants, the roots will get clogged up and they can get root rot and they can suffocate. So too much water can definitely kill, especially some plants are quite intolerant of having wet feet. Contrastly, if the ground dries out too much, it can shock a plant so much that they just never really recover. It can trigger that thing inside them that says you need to quickly make seeds. And so even once you've watered them, they can just bolt to seed at a really small size. If you're having trouble with a whole lot of transplants that you've done, just bolting straight to seed, just be sure that while they are small, that they're being kept continuously damp. Too much water also can wash out the nutrients from a soil. If the soil is free draining, but it's getting a lot of water through it, it can wash the nutrients away very quickly. So plants are kind of like Goldilocks. They really need everything to be just right for them to do really well. So do you have plants that are really struggling? Here are a few top tips on what you can do to help remedy that situation. My first tip would be to plant to a calendar. And if you don't have a garden calendar yet or a gardening journal, I have created one and I've got it listed on Amazon. So I'll link to that down below. I've put it together over all the years of me working on my garden and things that I'm trying to keep record of and then I've made it pretty. So I've put it down below for you so that you can check it out. A calendar allows you to make sure that you're planting the right plants at the right time of year so you're less likely to have problems with them either not germinating, dropping blossoms, or really struggling with the temperature changes. Buy local and try and save your own seeds. That way you know you're getting plants that are best adapted to your own environment. While your plants are young, protect them from temperature extremes. If it's still likely to have the odd frost, throw around some frost cloth or move them inside or put them into a tunnel house. And if they are plants that really love the heat, look at doing something like a heat mat or something to keep them nice and warm and growing really vigorously while they're small. If you're trying to grow seeds in the heat of summer, you need the complete opposite. You need a shade house or to grow them around the shady side of the house. To try and even out that temperature for them. Keep your young plants watered really well. They need between an inch to two inches of water every week but that's relying on it being free draining soil. If your soil isn't draining well, look at adding some gypsum and some organic matter in there to help build, well, the organic matter content, obviously, but also to loosen the soil up, help release some of the nutrients that that clay just holds onto so well. Contrastly, if your soil is sandy and it is draining too much and it just dries out too quickly, organic matter will help retain that moisture in there, as well as keeping the nutrients in close. Sandy soil is really prone to nutrient leaks because the amount of water that just runs straight through it, it just sucks the nutrients away. Keep your soil food web really well fed. Add compost at least once or twice a year or mulch with something organic, straw or hay or a wood mulch. They're all really good options and they help feed the soil. Adding mulch to your soil also helps keep the temperature balance a lot more regular around the roots of your plants. At the same time, if you think your plants might be lacking nutrients, a key suggestion that that might be the problem is if brassicas leaves have kind of gone pinky purple, or if any of your plant's leaves are starting to yellow, chances are they need some nitrogen. And the easiest way of adding that to the soil or adding it to the plants is to make something like a compost tea. And then you can use that to water around your plants. Be sure to keep your garden weeded. Plants that are choked out by weeds just are not gonna grow well. If you have seedlings that are really struggling, try adding extra light, especially if they're looking long and leggy. That's a really big sign that they're not getting enough light. And my final tip is be patient. It might be that the plants aren't actually growing slowly. It might be that you're just too impatient to get them out of the ground again. Plants do take time and sometimes they take longer than what it says on the seed packet. So as long as they are growing, chances are they're doing just fine. Do you have any tried and true tricks that you can share? Put them in the comments below, I'd love to hear them. If you found this video helpful, these other two videos might also be really helpful for you. One is on growing plants in the shade and the other is the 20 fastest growing vegetables that you can grow. 